for? You got to write a ticket for stalking now? You know, if it's a misdemeanor. Yeah, unless it's sex related specifically, but it's that's one of the crimes now that, uh, that the officer is supposed to write a ticket for. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the legislature prefers as opposed to arrest. So it's that kind of stuff you're talking about. There's that's not enough it. protection uh, for people who get involved in relationships. Uh, well, the, what, what we think ought to happen is, and it, it's not going to happen in in every case, but uh, it's not, Kentucky is only one of four states now, this has changed, that does not provide protection from dating violence. For example, if your daughter was 18. My daughter ain't dating. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll assume that she did. That 35. She, and she ended up <laughs> dating a bum, and he ended up beating her up and harassing her and that. You don't have to call the police for that, right? <laughs> oh, Officer Don will handle it, but let's assume that I tried okay, to Okay, let's right assume way. that okay. you're aware. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> then what happens is she ought to be able to go get an emergency protective order to keep the guy away from her, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, sure. Well, she can't in Kentucky, and she ought to be able to in Kentucky. And, of course, the the legislature is filled with criminal defense lawyers. They, they don't like the idea. Their excuse is that it's going to clog up the docket, the court dockets. Give me a break. Well, you know what? I got, I got news for them. Arresting people tends to clog up the court docket. But isn't that what the docket's for? You don't solve the problem by saying, well, just don't bring them before court and we don't have to mess with them. Is that what they're saying? I don't know. Just don't arrest them and we don't have to put them in jail. And just don't put them in jail. We have to worry about how to get them out. It's in, it's insane. You see, you're getting you're getting wound up. Again. So I pushed a button here. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's, yeah, that's not what we were trying to do. I said I wouldn't. We were going to wouldn't going to go there. But well, yeah. any rate, I encourage people to go to LexingtonProsecutor. dot com because we we want people to get the latest news, and they're going to get it clearly from a prosecution perspective. You know our. Our web page is pretty opinionated, and I don't apologize for it because it, it has to represent. Somebody's got to represent the voice for victims, and because the media is mostly uh, talking about the defendants, the criminals, and that sort of thing. Almost no time is devoted to the victims of these thugs. And we, that's our main focus, is getting the word out about victims. I want to say something, too, about the whole political aspect of this, just from my perspective. To me, this isn't a political issue. I could care less. When we talk about the legislators, because sometimes we'll take a little jab here and there. Mm -hmm. I could care less if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent. It don't matter. And that, that's not, this is not about politics. Mm -hmm. It's about once they get elected, uh, are they doing their job? And how are they doing their job, which... We've said before, the number one responsibility of government is the protection of its citizens, period. All the other stuff is icing on the cake. But if you don't at least protect the people and prevent chaos and make the streets safe, you can't do business. You're not going to attract businesses to the state. You're going to have a horrible quality of life, so people are going to move somewhere else. People move away from crime. Don't think they don't. They, they, they look for safer neighborhoods if you don't give them safe neighborhoods. The people that can afford it do. Uh, so that, that's what this is about. This is this had nothing to do with, with anything other than get with it. And, you know, hey, I'm glad you got elected. Don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, whatever you are. Let's just take care of, of the first order of business. We should all be on the same page with that. Uh, but as you said, a lot of these people are defense attorneys. There aren't very many prosecutors in the legislature. And people don't understand that. These are the people that are writing our laws, and they tend to lean toward the thugs. I mean, that's what's been going on, especially here recently. And they hide behind, we're trying to protect people's rights. You know, okay. No, what, there they're, hiding behind, to that. what they're hiding behind now is we can't afford, we can't afford to protect well, you're right. it's our a, citizens. They, they've, they, yeah. they, they, what they're doing is they're saying it's a financial thing. Well, let me tell you something. You ask the public what they want, and I'll guarantee you they want to feel safe. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, it, the appearance of the legislature these days, and the governor for that matter, is let them out 
let's just pass the cost of crime on to new victims. And it's, boy, is it offensive. Um, and it's going to come back. It will come back and haunt them. Don't ever forget it. I listened to a, I listened to a speaker uh, last night, and she said, she said there was a burglar that was tiptoeing in this house, mm -hmm. and I said to myself, "Excuse me, burglars don't tiptoe in houses. They knock the door down, they walk." They stomp through, they take what they want, and they leave. Well, actually, you didn't say that to yourself. You got upset it after you <laughs> talking. Well, I'm so, trying to dress it up. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're right. And uh, and the other thing that that speaker said was a she she had spent some time talking with police, and she found out. Guess what? A great discovery. That is. A small percentage of criminals commit most of the crime. Duh! What have we been saying all this time? Of course! And those are the people, those repeat offenders, the ones that go to prison. And now our legislature has passed a law to let those slugs out. And what we know about those people, those repeat offenders, is they when they're on the street, they commit crime after crime after crime. And when they're incarcerated, in prison, in jail, guess what? They don't. Now, this gets back. Who do you who do you treat better? The criminals or the people who are asking government to protect them? Well, we're letting them out of prison. That ought to send a message. Well, and they, they tend to design laws around the fact that it's a given these people are going to be out. And I'll give you an example. Uh, regardless of how you feel about it, the legislation is being pushed to uh, not allow over-the-counter sale of drugs that have uh, pseudofed in them, okay? Uh, so that, that, that's, that's there, whatever you think about it. But I had someone tell me about that. They said, you know, they wouldn't have to push this law if they could catch these people that are, are making the meth in these labs. And I, and I stopped and said, hold on a second, hold on. If you want to push the law, that's okay. I really don't know the whole the whole spin around the law, but they, I know I was a cop for 22 years. We do catch the people that that make. We know who's doing it 90% of the time. They won't keep them in jail. So if you kept them in jail, then uh, then maybe you wouldn't have to pass craft these laws to deal with the fact that they're out. And and then I said something. I said, what percentage of the population do you think actually owns a meth lab? Do you think it's one percent? Uh, do you think it's less than 1%? Well, I, it's, I'm sure it's less than less than 1% of the people that are actually uh, making meth. You could keep those people in jail. You could do that. And then and then the problem solved. So I want to talk. Can I change the subject? Yeah, I agree. With I want to talk about a, a program that's, or a, a show that's been in town being uh, recorded. This gonna, it's a national show, 2020. And they've uh, they're in town doing a story on the Steve Nunn case, and uh, one of our favorite folks, uh, Caroline Dunn, is has been out talking to the anchor of that, and uh, I want her to tell us a little bit about the what what her experience was with that. Um, well, Chris Cuomo, one of the lead anchors of 2020, came to Lexington to do a story on the Amanda Ross and Steve Nunn case for their new limited series called Revenge for Real. Um, this episode will be on aired on March 14th, next Wednesday at 10 p.m. So you all should check it out. It's very interesting, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Chris, Chris Cuomo. Tell us what you Chris did. Cuomo. Um, because there's going to be a, a story on our web page, Officer Don, uh, that, that Caroline did. She did a report on... Uh, on the reporter. On the reporter. <laughs> story, story a report the story. on the reporter. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, I actually did a story, um, a behind-the-scenes look of what was going on um, with all the interviews and actually had the opportunity to interview Chris Cuomo. Tune in to the following stations every Sunday to hear full episodes of In Touch with Ray the DA and Don Evans.